Hello, Anna. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Friday. Hello, Paula. Ciao, Giovanni. Hello, Mark. Hello, Angela. Hello, Carolyn. Hello, Tom. Hello, Julia. Kathy. Kathy's from Cheney, Washington. Very nice. Well, happy Thursday, everybody. So, this is going to be the uh, next week. We're going to try a new um, format. And what I'm going to do is. Um, invite artists, different artists on Thursday and on Friday. And they're gonna be with me and you'll be able to ask them questions. Um, you'll be able to, we'll be able to see your work, which would be kind of interesting. I really wanna see your work. Um, so it'll be kind of interactive. So it'll be, it'll be new. Um, you wanna know who the artists are for next week, but after next week, you will know who the artists are on Thursday and who the artist is on Friday. Um, so I think it'll be very, very interesting. Hello, Mandy. Hello, Lorena. Okay. So with that, there was a question that was asked last week. And it was about um, which colors are the, or which color is the brightest. And so let me flip this upside so you can see it. Trying to get this so you can see it. And uh, next week too, I'll be in the new room, so this will get better, way better. Okay, so what I did is I took the C Lab that are on the Excel spreadsheet, and I just for for talking points, I did about twenty. And I went for the brightest colors, the first 20. And then I thought it would be interesting is to take um, the darkest colors. So they're darkest going this way, and they're lightest or brightest going this way. So when we look at the values of the C lab, we have the L, the, um, I don't know if I'm to be able to do an A upside down. I could do a B upside down. Probably not the A. The L is for light, and that's this, this right here. So if we look, Chinese white is the brightest at 97. That's very, very bright. Can you see that? Put even more down here. So. Um, Chinese white is a 97 with titanium white being a 96. Then we have the nickel titanate, Hansi yellow. So these are all, these are the brightest colors within the colors that we have. The interesting thing within these top bright colors, you can see some of them are warm. Some of them are the warmest colors. And there's even one that's cool. So remember when we, when we look at that, we look at that. You have the yellow, the blue, the red, and the green, and this would be the warmest, and this would be the coolest. So they're all in different quadrants, which is really interesting. I think sometimes you think that, well, a really bright color can only be uh, a warmest color, and that's not necessarily accurate. So that was that's good for me to see as well. And then when we look at the dark, because I thought the, a good question was also to look at the dark, um, as we talked before, indigo is the darkest within Danthrone blue and then lamp black. Um, that's because on the lamp black, there's little tiny, um, 
white from the paper, so it gets a higher number or less dark. And all the way up to, so even within the dark colors, we have cool colors. We have a warmest in the warmest quadrant, which is the lamp black. Um, we have in the warm quadrant, so we have in all the different quadrants, cool, warmest, warm, and cool. Pretty interesting. Now one of the other questions, I believe it was Rin asked, which was which one of the interferences, which one of the interference colors is um, the brightest? And really can't answer that. Um, so I can't answer it, but in a certain way. So of the luminescent colors, um, they are all unbelievably bright. Uh, because when you put the luminescent colors over a white paper, now this is from a machine standpoint, not, not, our, not our eyes. Um, when we present it to the photospectrophotometer, because there's very little or no color, you can just see the white paper you don't get anything on the X or Y axis because there's no color. There's no red, yellow, blue, or green. So they're zeros. Um, and then the light, because it's being, it's not being absorbed by the, by the light, it's being reflected back, almost all of it. It's roughly 100%, which is unbelievable. So the only way to answer that is they are, they are all the brightest. They are all the brightest colors within the luminescent kind of makes sense they're they're very reflective so that was a good question okay i'm gonna just read some of your responses make sure i'm getting everything hello illinois uh, Oh, so Ethel has figured a way along with um, Angela how to make the presentations in Spanish. So that's going to be the other thing next week is if you want to listen in Spanish, um, there'll be like right here a Skype that you can actually hear the presentation in Spanish. Um, so we're just trying to get a uh, uh, better offering um, options for, for, for all of you as viewers. So with that, we have about 20 colors left to do of the luminescent. So I'm going to finish those off today. And next week and the weeks after, I'll be showing you some of the Primatex. We'll look at some of the sticks. But we're going to do that with another artist present. So um, your, your questions um, are going to be really super important because the other artists will be able to answer that, or the artists will be able to answer that. So with that, I'm going to push this down. I'll put this down. And we're going to look at the luminescence. And what I did today is I'm going to put a piece of white underneath. So I'm going to go from the black to the white. And I still couldn't see how quite to turn off that autofocus, so I'll try not to put my hands in the way all the time. I think it'll work. There we go. Okay. So the colors we're going to look at, we're going to look at iridescent bronze, we're going to look at interference silver, iridescent jade, iridescent ruby, and duochrome lapis sunlight. Okay, so I'm going to turn this around just so I can see this. Well, I'll recall, I'll read, leave these out again. All right. Runs. 
silver. Duochrome Lapis Sunlight. There we go. So that was going to be Iridescent Bronze. Super bright color. So I'll put it on black and I'll put it on white too. This is going to be Interference Silver. Interference Silver, we're going to expect to see it on the, on the dark. It doesn't have to be black, just it's really going to pop on the dark. So this is going to be the Interference Silver. We expect to see it on the black and then be very light on the white, and it is, so there it is on the white. This is going to be iridescent. This is iridescent jade. It's going to be iridescent ruby. Hello, Agnes. Hello, Eve. And this last one is going to be duochrome lapis sunlight. There we go. Okay, so that's the iridescent bronze. So iridescent, we'd expect to see it over white, and we do. And if, I'm going to hold this up so you can see this in a moment. Interference silver. Interference is going to be more reflective, so more actually more refractive. So that's why it's harder to see over the white. Iridescent ruby. Iridescent jade. And duochrome lapis sunlight. So let me show you those. And then as they dry, they're really going to pop, and I'll show you that too. But that, the bronze is just off the chart. I mean, even on the screen, it's super bright, but here in front of me, it's just awesome. Um, we are doing pearlescent today, so you'll be able to see pearlescent as well. And we can probably play with it if you want to play with it. And there it is over white. More difficult to see, so there's the silver. And there's the duochrome. Kind of see the duochrome. Kind of, there we go. Kind of see it. Okay, so I'm going to put these here so they can dry out a little bit.
those away let me show you that there they are in the in the palette right here okay yeah the golds are pretty interesting because there's more than one gold there's the gold there's the antique gold I'm gonna ask um, Claudia to be with us. So any of you having questions about the um, luminescent colors, I'm going to ask Giovanni. So at some point you'll, they'll be on. You can ask them questions. They use them quite a bit. Um, and we'll be able to see kind of your work as well. Since I brought all my gears with me to Mexico, that's awesome. All right, so let's try the. This is going to be the iridescent gold. iridescent antique gold. Duochrome Violet Fantasy. Duochrome Hibiscus. Duochrome cactus flower. I'm going to show you what those look like in mass tone. So there they are in mass tone. This is going to be the um, gold. Uh, this is the iridescent gold. And this is the antique, iridescent antique. So those quite a difference. You can give more strength to gold by mixing iridescent gold and antique gold. Okay, we're going to try that. I love those. So I've got paper. We'll try some of that. So the first one we're going to do is going to be the iridescent gold. Iridescent gold. And the next one is going to be the antique gold. And then just um, still kind of wet. This is a mixture of the antique and the iridescent. So it's this one and this one mixed. Okay, so we'll have that one dry too and see what it looks like.
Okay, the next one is the, this is the Violet Pearl, Violet Pearl. Oh, it's kind of pretty. And this is going to be the duochrome. This is the duochrome hibiscus. So next week, I think what's going to be really exciting is if any of you have done artwork with these and you'd be willing to share, you'll be able to share it. Make it more interactive. There we go. And the last one is going to be the duochrome cactus flower. So Mickey's art from Layton, Utah. How is it in Utah? Is it, is it hot? Or is it still kind of, because you've got to have some really good elevation. I love that gold. Now that gold has some of the antique inside of it still. So here's our first set starting to starting to dry. So that antique interference silver is just really bright. Just keeps on getting brighter. And the iridescent bronze and the ruby and the iridescent jade. And then the duo, duochrome lapis sunlight. And there they are over white. Same colors over white. So that's the ruby, and that's the jade. That's the dual lapis sunlight, the iridescent bronze, and the interference silver. Interference silver look very kind of light over the white, but just really takes off on the darks. Look, Caroline. Hello, Raffaele. So, Mickey's, it, Utah is very hot and dry and windy. 106, oh my gosh. That is hot. Really good at getting it on my hands. There, there's what that's what it looks on a looks like on a human's hand.
You're welcome, Anna. Okay, so what we're looking at is we're going to look at the interference copper. We're going to look at the pearlescent white. Then I have the interference red. I have the pearlescent shimmer. Then the interference lilac. And lastly, the duochrome saguaro green, like the saguaro cactus. Now, the pearlescent white, the pearlescent white and the pearlescent shimmer is the same pigment. The pearlescent shimmer just happens to be a larger particle size, so it has more of a sparkle to it than does the shimmer, which is a smaller particle size. Okay. So Carolyn says 730 a.m. here in Australia and freezing cold. Ah, the weather is just unbelievable all over the place. I'm excited about next year that I get to travel and see all of you again. So that I'm really looking forward to that. It's just amazing how, much, how fast time has gone. Okay, interference cop. Pearlescent white. Interference red. Pearlescent shimmer. Lilac. And Saguaro Green. And let me show those to you. That's interesting. So Carolyn says she had a day with art conservationists looking at the history of handmade artist paints. Yeah, sometimes these tubes are a mess and that's just me not cleaning them when I'm done. Um, it's kind of that haste kind of thing. And if they have a black streak like that, it means I've taken them all over the world. So they've probably been, uh, this one's probably been to maybe, maybe 13 countries. Uh, probably three continents. So they are well traveled. Okay, so let's look at these. Okay, so we're going to start out with uh, interference copper. So is the 20, is Raphael, is the 20 in, in Celsius or Fahrenheit? Interference copper. So interference copper, we're going to expect that when we put it over the white, um, it's going to be difficult to see. And there it is. And that's because that's that refractive quality of the paint. Okay, this one is going to be the pearlescent white. 
the pearlescent white is going to have the smaller mica size. Same pigment as the pearlescent shimmer, just a different particle size. So it's a very fine particle size. I mean, they're both fine particle size. Just one is much finer. There we go. That's the pearlescent white. Oh, it's in Celsius. So 20, 40, 72. I think Fahrenheit, about 72. It's not bad. This one's interference red. Again, interference, we're not going to expect to see it heavy across the white. And that is the case. There we go. This is going to be the pearlescent shimmer. Now, the pearlescent shimmer is a larger particle size. Pearlescent. I mean, look at that. You can even see it on my brush. It's just, just loaded. So that dry is going to be much brighter than that one. Bright, much brighter. That's not. That's not. You'll just see more of the particle. Okay, this is going to be the interference lilac. Interference lilac. Lastly, this is going to be the duochrome saguaro. Duochrome saguaro. That's that really super big cactus with the big arms. Now you might say, well, how come sometimes, John, the duochromes, <clears throat> you can't see it very well over the white, and sometimes you can. And that's just the different, um, different combinations of what, because remember it has both the iridescent and interference uh, within the duochrome. And so if it has more of the iridescent, then you're going to be able to see it more over the white. If it's more of the interference, then it'd be just like these interferences. It'd be, it'd be refracting it'd be more difficult to see over the white. This is more reflecting, at least this particular duochrome. So, Carolyn asks, other artists watching, so Giovanni, Raffaele, um, all of you, what colors would be layered together to produce the beautiful oxidized blue copper domes we see in Europe? Anderson Art Gallery. That's funny. This is starting to get interesting. In Sweden, the time is 11.30 p.m. and 15 degrees Celsius. 
By the way, my husband is storing in my right ear, interfering in it, and I have John in my left ear. Oh, that is nice. So replying to Carolyn Giovanni says, a various mix with antique, antique, and then cascade green and ultramarine. If I had those handy, I would I would do that. Hello, Besnick. Okay, so let me put these away for a moment, and then we'll come back to them. Ooh, I'm taking it up with my finger there, big old thumbprint. Okay. Italy, the name for that oxidized is verd, 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 verdidim. Try with antique coral red and various green for your town. Thank you for sharing that, Giovanni. Okay, so these are going to be iridescent russet. Duochrome blue pearl, duochrome mauve, mauve, iridescent copper, and iridescent antique bronze. Perhaps John can make us a new paint that creates the oxidation color. We use we actually have lots of oxides, don't we? Quite a few oxides. We had the azurite and the malachite. Looking about bringing. Maybe the malachite and or azurite back in, probably the malachite back in um, pans. God, that's just pretty. That's iridescent russet. Iridescent russet. That is just pretty. So I'd be interested if, if any of you happen to have tried out the Skype to listen to the translation in Spanish, kind of what you think, because if it works really good, I'd like to open that up to a, a 
Italian, um, and other languages. But if you're, uh, if you can speak Spanish, I'd love to know if you can, if it sounds good. That's the Duochrome Blue Pearl. Duochrome Blue Pearl. This is going to be the duochrome mauve, mauve, mauve. Now the our um, azurite and malachite would have extremely good light fastness. Um, only issue, and when we were when we were selling it directly, we were able to put it on to the um, order form, and our, our call center would talk to the artist that was calling in, is that the very, very top of the aluminum tube that you, that we use, the inside is coated but they can't get the coating into the very, very top of the tube where the, where the, um, they can't get it into this very, very top piece right here. So the whole, the whole tube all the way down is coated, but they can't get the coating into this little top piece right here. And when you have a, a, a copper, malachite nazarite or, or coppers and they touch that aluminum um, they form little tiny granules and then eventually over time it'll just close that off well you could poke it and then get rid of that um, and it's it's very usable but with plastic there won't be that issue but insofar as the light fastness, it's an unbelievably light fast color. I'll show you something here in a second. There we go. So let me let those dry and those are the iridescent russet, the, du the duochrome blue pearl, the duochrome mauve, the iridescent copper, and the antique bronze. Lunar Earth is, is beautiful. It's a very granulating color. Um, in fact, probably, I think, two or three presentations ago, I showed all of the um, Lunar Earths. So the Lunar black, lunar blue, etc. Let me see. Um, you do this without getting my getting all of my hands all over it. So this is what we do for all of the colors. This is from our xenon photometer, And we, we put it through the xenon photometer, then we put it to the photospectrophotometer. And the photospectrophotometer is going to give us back the reading for the C lab. And if we look at this one right here, this is for moon glow. So the color is, it's hard to read upside down, but it's for moon glow. And what it comes back with is a 
and anything between zero and four is a category one, which means 100 plus years. This is the moon glow. And this is the area, so 3.25. This is the area that was presented to the photospectrophotometer. So for every one we do, we have the sample, we put where we presented to the photospectrophotometer. And then it gives us back a reading for every, for every color we have, for every color we do. And between zero and four is a light fastness of one. So even though the pigment manufacturer tells us what each pigment is, and um, in some instances the ASTM can say what a pigment is, we will do our own test. We have all the equipment to be able to do it. So somebody had asked about that, I'm gonna put it under, I'm giving it to you, um, customer service to put in as a frequently asked question. So it was a really, really good question. Um, let's see. Similar, similar, see malachite edge. Yeah. I haven't tried that on Earth. Uh, the Cayman green turquoise to more green than Sleeping Beauty. Yes. Uh, Cayman's more green, Sleeping Beauty's more blue. Yeah. Can you explain how it's of replacing the pigment, pigment in a south facing window for a season? So our, our results, and it would all be, you know, via uh, machines. Um, so on LFT are different than yours. We're on LFT are different. Let me look at that. Um, can you tell me why you don't have a more? I just finished my first tube. There's times where a manufacturer will no longer make a pigment. Um, or sometimes they will make a replacement pigment and it's so far off from what the original is we can't use it. So it could be any one of those, any one of those instances. Um, so this right here then is the last one. It's drying really well. And then there it is over white. So let me bring the other ones out so you see those too. I'm just gonna kind of get those wet, get those wet pieces off. Okay. And this is our iridescent, iridescent gold. This is the antique gold, the violet violet pearl, duochrome hibiscus, and the uh, cactus flower. And there they are in white, on over white paper. This was our mix. So this is our mix between these two colors. So this is iridescent gold and iridescent antique gold mixed. It actually kind of looks like both of them in a way. Oh, that's interesting, Paula. So this, here we go, is the interference copper, the pearlescent white. So there's the pearlescent white, interference red, pearlescent shimmer, interference lilac, and duochrome saguaro with my big thumbprint. And there they are over white. So let me show you these. Let me get this, try to get this closer here. You can really see that the shimmer, because it has its smaller particles, 
it really covers the, the paper more versus the larger particles, you can actually see more of the black coming through. So the black of the paper. See that, let me get really close. This is the smaller particle. These are both the same exact. This one's pearl white, pearlescent white, and this is pearlescent shimmer. The shimmer is the larger particle, but you see more of the black underneath the shimmer because it's larger particle, whereas the smaller particle covers more of the paper, and therefore it's actually, we can ask someone like Claudia or Giovanni which one they prefer. Everybody has a preference. And then this is the last one. This was our first one. Um, this is the iridescent bronze, the interference silver. That bronze and silver are really bright. This is the ruby, iridescent jade, and the lapis sunlight. Okay, so with that, we have gone through all 50, 40, 49, 48 of the luminescence. 19 duochromes, 7 interference, 2 pearlescent, and 20 iridescent. So, let's do it one more time. Here we go, we'll do that one. show the moss watch again yeah so So Cheryl, right here. Oh, you're very welcome. My pleasure. Okay, so with that, we have finished. Let me put this down. We have finished um, all of the general colors, and now we have finished all of the luminescence. So the only thing left um, are, thank you, Susie, are the um, Primatex. And I think what I want to do is um, invite another artist it's going to be interesting because I'm going to invite artists from all over the world. So just like some of you, when you say, wow, it's 11 o'clock or it's midnight where I'm at. Um, I did a presentation for um, Fabriano and I think it was um, four o'clock in the morning, which was, I believe, 12 o'clock in Italy. Um, so it's going to be um, interesting. The one thing I like is that as artists, you're all troopers and <laughs> I know that um, I'll have people from all over the world, different time zones, who are absolutely wanting to come on and share. I really, I really, it's such a great quality, that one of, of wanting to, to share. 
Um, it is the 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 Moab is. It is. It's. I would say it's kind of a, a bluish purple. Here in front of me, it's very pretty. Um, the blue pearl next to it. I mean, God, they're all just so. Um, they're kind of like happy colors to me. They're almost like um, blues, or yellows, and oranges. Um, here in Washington, the uh, California poppies out, so which is a beautiful, a beautiful orange. Um, a lot of the um, uh, bushes are, are blossoming, rhododendrons, so just full of color. Um, so with that, I wanted to thank all of you very much. I appreciate it. I uh, appreciate you being with me. Um, and next week, there'll be two mystery artists, and after that, you'll know who the artist is. So if you're interested in showing your artwork or asking a question about a color or a technique, I'm going to have people such as um, Lauren. Lauren will give you fantastic giving techniques about how to, how to unload a brush, how to load a brush. Um, George, I mean, you're all wonderful. So it'll be, it'll be great um, having that different, different lineup. So thank you all very much. Thank you for joining me. Um, if I don't see you tomorrow, I will see you next week. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Anna. I'll see you. And thank you, Mel. I'll see you all next week. Bye-bye, everybody.